Hey Java nuts, it's coffee time. Welcome to the first episode ever. In my videos, I will share the many tips and tricks that I have learned to create the perfect brew every time at home on a budget. In today's video, I'd like to show you how to pull that coffee shop shot that you've been craving, all with an at-home espresso machine. As always, all products featured in this video are linked in the description below. I will also link some other great recommendations so you can pull that perfect shot on almost any budget, so be sure to check those out. This is the Mr. Coffee Automatic Dual Shot Espresso Cappuccino System, and it comes with everything you see here. Now, I've had this machine for almost 10 years, and it is still going strong. It is still my number one recommendation for anyone wanting to pull that perfect shot at home on a budget. Now, before you load your espresso into your espresso machine, the first thing that you need to is good water. Not all water is created equal. I always recommend using bottled water. Reverse osmosis is one of the best cleanest water that you can attain. Now, I'm going to be using this Fiji water which I've linked below, but you don't have to use Fiji. It can be any good quality bottled water. Going behind the machine you'll find the water reservoir with its maximum and minimum line marked on the reservoir itself. Never ever run your machine if it's below or very close to the minimum line. You can see here I'm well above it which is perfect for the two shots that we're going to pull today. Before we pull our two shots I like to work with a clean station. The way I do that is with a paper towel. Today we're going to be pulling one shot of each type of coffee as we're going to do two total shots. I'm going to pull my single shot cup filter but the Mr. Coffee does come with two. This is your double cup, single cup. Now Mr. Coffee does call it cups, technically they're shots. Let's talk grind. This machine is great because it allows you to use different ground sizes to pull that shot. The most desired ground of course is espresso ground so for that I'll be using this Lavazza espresso. Now sometimes you can't find the roast that you like or the brand that you like in espresso ground roast. So I'll be using this Pete's which is a medium fine ground. And the main differences between the grounds as you can see this is the Pete's right here it's medium fine and you can actually see the granules here the particle size is relatively large. The Lavazza is a very very finely ground espresso ground. And this helps create a much higher bar pressure in the machine itself. Both are fine this is best. So we always start by turning on the machine and allowing it to heat up. This button here indicates that the machine is heating up while this is the power button. When this finishes blinking, it's ready for its first operation. Depending on the ambient temperature outside the machine, it may take it up to 30, 40, sometimes 50 seconds to heat up. That sound means it's ready. Now we'll start with the Pete's coffee, with the medium fine to show you the differences between them and the crema that you can achieve with just a medium fine roast first. Grab your all-in-one spoon and tamper and grab one spoonful of your coffee and add it to your cup. Some may fall out, that's fine. Use the flat side right here to push the grounds right in place and tamp it. Grab what they call a cup holder or the filter holder and grab your filter, put it in. This right here helps keep the filter in place as you dump your grinds out. Fit it right up there into the unlocked position and spin it into the locked position. Grab your shot glass that you're going to be using. Line it right below where the espresso will come out, which is this and this two plugs. Tell the machine that you're going to be brewing and not frothing milk. Come to the side and turn this turn lever down until it clicks the machine will kick on. A shot is pulled to about right there. Hold your cup in place because it will slide. Cleaning is extremely simple. Unlock the machine. Use this plastic lever to hold the cup in place. Come over to your sink and that's it. You rinse it off and you're good to go for your next shot. 
We now repeat the process with the lavazza. Never forget to tamp. Again, lock the filter holder into the machine. Tell the machine that you're going to brew and turn the turn lever down. Turn the turn lever back to center position to shut the machine back off. And there you have it. Lavazza espresso, Pete's coffee pulled as an espresso shot. Now let's take a closer look. You can see that the Lavazza over here did produce a finer crema, a browner crema, and the aroma is significantly higher than the Pete's. But I'm here to tell you that even medium fine ground will do perfect in an espresso machine. I dare you to try it. After you finish pulling your shot, clean your machine. These are rinsable, completely rinsable. And at the bottom here, you do need to clean this off and it's super simple to clean that off. All you gotta do is grab a damp paper towel, wipe it in circular motions, and again, flip it over. And one last time, this will get all the particulates that are stuck in there and you will get a clean shot the next time you do this. And of course, do not forget to shut your machine off. I wanted to go a little bit over with you what happens to the grounds themselves when the machine pulls all that 15 or so bar pressure through them. On the right side here is the Pete's medium fine. On the left side is the Lavazza fine. And as you can see, Start with the peats. It got super dark and extremely wet. That water was able to pass through really, really easily, which did not produce as fine of a crema as the Lavazza did. When we move over to the Lavazza, you can see that parts of it look dry. They're not, but they look dry. And that's because the pressure through the machine was able to push through extremely hot water to steam. And you can see that the grounds are extremely compressed, unlike the medium fine ground. Some of the newer sinks today can actually handle some grounds in the sink. The older sinks cannot. If you have an older sink or you prefer not to take that risk, always throw your grounds in the trash, never in the sink. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends who might also enjoy it. If you want to see more, please subscribe to my channel by clicking on the subscribe button. I have a lot of exciting videos planned, but I want to hear from you. So leave me a comment below and tell me what you'd like to see covered. Make sure to tune in next week for more caffeinated content. Until then.